everybody, good buddy Q here with Nobo. Yeah, and you may realize there's a weird difference between us. This is cause I'm doing it all on Skype this time. So they got their mic, I got my mic. Yeah. I'm um up in Washington and Kyo is where Kyo is and yes. unfortunately we didn't get that while she was up here. Yeah. So that's a thing. Yeah, but we're here for a let's discuss, as you kind of noticed in the uh, title. So yeah, we're going to let's discuss about Cardverse. Holy shit. Because there was a lot of people requesting this. And it's like, hell yeah. And Dick doesn't really know much about it. So it's like, well, me and Lubo made a whole fucking thing about it. Well, mostly Lubo did. So we oh, do come music on. You... and get, get, get Lubo here. And we can do fun things and discuss. And so now we're here. You can you contributed just as much as I did. You shush. You feel like a bit more. Anyway, that's because you got a lot of ideas. It's nice. It's neat. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it, dude. Yes, let's get on with it with the basic intros for canon shit because there's only a smidge of this that is canon. So a long, long time ago, for the Artistella, the art book of Italia. Uh, Himoria made uh, poker chips of the king, queen, and jack for all four um, card suits. You know, diamond, club, spade, and heart. And with each kingdom, he was also they're also signed with wealth, wealth for diamonds, love for hearts, luck for clubs, and power for spades. And that was actually pretty much it. Like, he did no other contribution to that with the universes or anything, or did anything more than that. It was just something pretty to look at. Just these little cute little chips. Yay. But people ran with it, because it's like, Oh my god, some sort of medieval fantasy setting? Sign me the fuck up! And so... Good shit! Good shit! <laughs> but uh, this is just mostly our opinions about the uh, Cardverse universe, and, you know... Had ideas, had like in historical influences, bit of fan and that was involved with the Cardverse AU. And again, our ideas. Like, we like to think of it as a balance of like, this universe is medieval based, yes. But we also think of it as f both fairy tale, like, you know, all the magic and all the wacky magical hijinks, and politics, all Game of Thrones up in this shit. So it's, it's a nice combination of both. So it's like, things happen. Oh boy, people gotta deal with it. Oh boy, two things happen. The thing what? is, is that Cardverse is just like a basically medieval Europe or any medieval court setup anywhere on Earth. There's a lot of backstabbing, there's a lot of drama, and not everybody gets their happy ending. And there's a lot of different cultural stuff to deal with. But... Let's start by getting some ground rules going. These are our personal ideas about the world. First, let's start off with magic. Obviously, this is a semi-medieval setting with appropriate technology or lack thereof. You're not going to see, at least in our version, laser pistols, guns, um, missiles, planes, that kind of thing. You're looking at a world that doesn't have a lot of indoor plumbing, unless magic allows it to. Not Nobody has glasses if it's not technologically appropriate. you still got horses and carriages in most kingdoms. Stuff like that. Magic exists, and each country has a particular kind of magic as typically associated with them. And generally, a person from said country can't use another country's magic all that well, only their own. So, if a person from the Diamonds Kingdom, for instance, wanted to use um, Spadian magic, it wouldn't work all that well. But they sure as hell can use their own. We'll get to the kind of magic associated with each kingdom later on. Using magic causes physical changes in the caster, usually only temporarily, and it betrays their country of origin in doing so. It's mostly in the eyes, because um, they like to glow. <laughs> so basically, if one is using a lot of magic, um, they're, like, say they're from hearts, then their eyes will grow red. Glow red. Yeah. And, you know, so on and so forth. So even if you do immigrate, or if you're 
you know, being a spy. If you use magic enough, you'll see where you originally came from, so makes it hard to spy. Yeah, unless you use illusionary magic to cover it up. But even then, that's going to wear off if you use your magic too much. So it's, um, it's kind of a hint of where you're supposed to come from. All magic in this world, in this AU, is powered by an ore. Uh, the distribution of such within the land itself determines the relative strength of the country's magic. So if one country has a lot of this stuff, most of the citizens, if not all of them, are going to be capable of easily using magic. And for those that are, have a, a less distribution of it, they're not going to have as easy a time harnessing their own magic. Exposure to said ore in large doses is dangerous and can lead to birth defects and sterility. So imagine it's sort of like background radiation here for us. Just walking around town, you were exposed to very tiny doses of radiation from the sun or from the earth itself, even from, like, your toilet bowl. It happens. Um, there's naturally occurring uh, radioactive elements everywhere on earth. And for the rest of your life, you're going to be exposed to it. It doesn't hurt you, but it's there. But if you go sticking your face into a nuclear reactor, your face is going to melt off. Well... Oh, and you're going to die, and it's going to be horrible. The, this magic ore works roughly the same way, except in the case of magic. Being exposed to it gives you superpowers, essentially, because you're born into that, into that space that has all this magic potent within it. But if you use too much, or you unearth too much, it kind of backfires and it starts to kill your people. We'll get to that later. Yeah. And now, to the actual government and the basic kingdom setup. Now, these are just rules that are roughly the same between every single kingdom. Yep. Basically, every country has a court associated with its king. Every country has a ranking system from king down to a two, with a two being the lowest rank. And aces are always high. Yep. And each country's culture, architecture, clothing, mannerisms are all taken from the king's country at the absolute height of their power. Like, diamonds, for example. You got France for the king, so, you know, it's based on the sun, sun king. Clubs, the king is Yvon, so it's Catherine the Second based, and so on and so forth for the rest of them. All ranks are gender neutral so women can be kings and men can be queens it is just a rank it is not a signifier of gender and sex yeah they're the more like power positions than anything yeah yeah they're just power positions it has nothing to do with what is between your legs so it's more egalitarian that way mm-hmm Kings have the final say in the government and law and do typically kingly shit. You know, they work with the jacks, aces, other members of the court. You know, they're they're the higher-ups, they're the number one. They mess with the court and all that stuff. Though they, there's other jobs for other court members, too. The queens, their jobs tend to be more culturally based, and they're more flexible. They do what their king needs them to be. So, say... They need a negotiator within within court between two kings. Your queen can do that. You need a court magician, and your queen is really adept at using magic. She can be the court. She or he can be the court magician. If your queen, if your if your country is in desperate need of funding for certain for the poor, they can do fundraising and that sort of thing. If you need a general, your queen can be your general. The queen can also veto the king's decision if they feel that the decision is absolute garbage, or just outright take their place if the king dies. Queens can easily become regents. That is something that happened here, and why not let it happen in the Cardverse AU? They're just as important as their kings, if not more so. Yep, yep. And then you got the jacks that service really really beefed up corn matches now they do 
everything else around the corner. They make sure it runs smoothly. They're financials, uh, financial people. They're, they make sure the villages are running right. They make sure that everyone's doing their job and everything. It's, it's, it's a high stuff. They're pretty much, you know, ordering staff around and making sure everything's all hunky-dory. Jacks have all uh, the stuff to do. Other positions within society are taken as one goes down the line, with two to four being typically farmers and local and millers, that sort of thing. They generally don't really own a lot of land. They don't own a lot of things. They're kind of poor. It really depends upon the, the country you're in, but generally two to four, you're kind of a peasant. Five to seven, you're usually a merchant, um, or you're really important within your village, like a blacksmith. You a, a village cannot run, or could not run back then, without a blacksmith. Or your nobor, or nobility, such as a baron, would be a seven. Then eight to ten, you're a scholar, you are high nobility, maybe you're a branch, an alternate branch of the royal family, maybe... You are a um, a dean at a university. You generally sit pretty high up. Now, there are, in a card set, like in a poker deck, there are four, four of each rank card. But in card verse, that does not necessarily mean that there's only four tens in a kingdom. What you're looking at generally is sort of a pyramid shape. You've got the face cards at the very, very top with the lowest number of members. And then right below it, the tens. There are a small number of tens. Then below that, the nines. There's going to be more nines, more eights, more sevens. And it continues on down the line until you have the most number of twos. Now, depending upon what kingdom you're in, this can get either steeper and have more upward mobility and downward mobility between them or it can get wider and wider means you've got more power centralized at the top with fewer people holding that power it all depends upon how that country sees and uses power does that, does that make any sense kill yeah okay you know it's more like you know hierarchy and stuff like that you know in a way, social. Social hierarchy and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And again, it's all culturally based. It changes depending upon what kingdom you're in. Yeah. We'll talk about more of those, you know, when we get to the kingdoms. Anyway, so moving onward, like, the best magic users within their country tend to get planted in the court as court magician, as we've said before, or a royal physician. Well, though this sometimes overlaps in the royal family, and they cover castle protection as long as well as immigration work and brand changes. Because, well, again, we'll we'll get to that part later. But usually, like as you noticed, um, court magicians can be you know royalty and stuff like that because you know they're the best at it. So you see that most a lot. Yeah, the royalty, the royal families tend to be very magical in general. So gen if they overlap. There's a good chance that they're, they were either pretty high in rank or they had a, maybe a royal family member somewhere in their line. I mean, there's, I mean, bastard sons and bastard daughters are not exactly uncommon or unheard of in certain kingdoms, so it makes some sense that somewhere up the line you're, uh, King Bartholomew kind of had a wayward thing with a two somewhere in his maid chamber, and ten generations later, they're back in the court as a as a uh, court magician. Surprise! Surprise! Aces are high and serve as protectors of the court and royal family. Usually, both general of the king's army and head of the guard. They could also serve as court magicians, because they're very well trained at using it. So it's as much physical capacity to do so as it is raw training. Yep. Aces are like the best knights. Number one. 
And marriages we, between the countries can happen, both out of love and for the sake of alliances, like political and stuff, though marrying out of love is actually pretty rare. Because, you that know, is, political. That is to say that, you know, one is fa one's immediately better than the other. Yeah, like love is important and stuff, it's just, you know... With things not working out right, um, it's mostly just arranged marriages and just finding whatever bits of love you can from it. But, again, it is it is rare, but it does happen sometimes. And now we come to the last one. All courts are located within their country's capital city. And... Sometimes that means that it's um, basically as far away from um, every el everybody else as possible. Whether that means it's in the middle of a uh, in the middle of the steppes, or high up in the mountains, or near a trading route because it sits right on the river, or even on an isolated island. You, when you take the capital city, the country will fall. Or when you blast it from a distance with intense bouts of magic, the country's gonna fall. Yeah, speaking of, there, amongst all these kingdoms, there is one area called the Outlands, or No Man's Land, that is basically uninhabited. And very dangerous. Yeah. It's right in the middle of all four kingdoms. But we'll get to that one more later. It's where Joker magic comes from, and we will explain again later, but it's a nasty place, and you generally don't want to stay there for very long if you can help it. Mm -hmm. Now we get to something that's really popular in the fandom, the brand. Like, personally, we're kind of eh, but we work with it, because, you know, it, it is popular, so it's like, might as well mix it. So... What the brand is, is basically a magical mark that appears at birth. You know, it's like a tattoo that says what you are, like two of diamonds or stuff like that. The rank generally runs in families, especially those of noble blood. Uh, kings and queens usually beget kings, but magically altering a child's brand isn't really unheard of. Especially in, you know, political drama of wanting to keep the royals within the royals and the peasants among the peasants. And stuff like that. Though, brands can change, like, with immigration, rank change, magical illusion, the court magician mostly being the one to be able to change brands and so on and so forth. But it can be changed. It is in form of predestined, you know, your fate on its own. You know, things can change, especially depending on where you are in the, in, you know, the kingdoms. Yeah, that was something that when I was researching Cardverse, it came up a lot. The idea of predestination, if your mark said that you were going to be a king, you were going to be a king regardless of your station, which sounds very good and all, but what happens when a king's brand is found on a two, uh, or rather is born into a family of twos, a bunch of peasants? Does that mean that the child's just whisked away in the middle of the night and can the peasantry even speak to their children anymore? Are they, what if this brand isn't found until this child is a teenager? What happens then? Does this mean that this, this king isn't, isn't educated in matters of the state? Do they not know how, they're not going to know how to run a state. They're not going to know how to be a king. They're not going to know how to a fight, a war, a political war, or a front war. It's not, it didn't make much sense to me when I was reading up on it. Because that's just generally not how humans work. But that's why we kind of altered it based on culture again. Every single kingdom sees it differently. And with each separate country's brand meaning something different to them. Some of them just don't care about it at all. Some of them treat it with absolute certainty. And then it's, yes, it is a form of predestination. And you were chosen to be a two, a dirt farming two. Or you were chosen to be a king. And you're never going to see your family again. Because you have to be taken away to get educated as soon as possible. Because otherwise we're going to have a weak king on the throne. And someone's going to take advantage of it from another kingdom. It's all cultural. Just like birthmarks are with us. 
There are some people out there who think that your birthmarks appear where you were killed in a past life. Or, your, in the past, birthmarks have been used to try people for witchcraft. It's Now we know that they're just pieces of pigment, but depending upon where you were born and at what time period, it could literally mean your life and death. Yep. And lastly, we come to the markless. Markless people are people that are born without a brand, or as whose countries were destroyed, and thus they lose their ties to the land. If they were born without a brand, they cannot use magic. Period. They have no connection to the land, and thus they can't use it. Now, who's, for those whose countries were destroyed, they lose it gradually. Now, they can assume the brand of another country via immigration by going to either a court magician or the king, or even carve out a niche for themselves. That is something, for instance, that happened in clubs. King Olga, the first king, was the, a markless who decided, Fuck this noise! I'm going to be king, and I'm going to unite all of these three branches and screw everybody else who says I can't. And it kind of gave birth to their cultural view on the brand. We'll get to that later, though. Yep. 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 So that's basically it for how the world works in our, you know, little cardversy world. And so, next time, we're going to talk about the kingdoms. All four of them. The things you're probably all really excited to hear about. Yep. Everybody. Diamonds, the king of what? The kingdom of wealth. Hearts, the kingdom of love. Clubs, the kingdom of luck. And spades, the kingdom of power. Now, something we noticed around when we were doing research for this is that the other three kingdoms were generally ignored for spades, and. We wanted to flesh them out just as much as Spades did. So you're going to get to hear all about them first. Yep. Because we know you all love the Yusuke and all, but... Nah. We got all the kingdoms. Everybody important. Everybody. Everybody is equally important. We're all in this together. Yep. But that's next time. Yes, yeah, so... Next time, kingdoms! So, have a good day, everybody. Bye! Bye!